What do you think of when you hear the words wave-based zombie shooter? Now I can imagine you're probably thinking about Call of Duty Zombies because I mean, why wouldn't you be thinking about it? It seems to be the only wave-based zombie game people know about at this point because of the mainstream plague that Call of Duty has become. Although the, uh, the new Zombies mode on Modern Warfare 3 looks kind of awful. <laughs> zombies in Call of Duty used to be pretty cool though. It's like a reward. I'm gonna be honest, I have a lot of fond memories playing it back in the day on World at War with my brother. Although I usually wouldn't be able to get past the intro cutscene without someone being in the room with me. I'm not talking about that though. Instead, I'm talking about another wave-based zombie shooter that I grew up with over a decade ago. And it's one that I still play frequently to this day. It's a little game called Killing Floor. Not the sequel, or the third game that was just announced. That shit looks hype though, I'm excited. We're talking about the OG game here, the, the, the British one. I'm done in you prats, help me! Killing Floor is a six player wave based zombie shooter that came out in 2009. And let me tell you, it's pretty awesome. It's just balls to the wall action where you blast zombies heads off listening to intense metal music while doing so. With gunplay that still holds up to this day. It just never gets old to me. It was published by a company known as Tripwire Interactive exclusively for PC, and you can literally buy it for less than the price of a McDonald's cheeseburger half the time. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be somewhat interested in checking it out because the game is bordering on being like the queen, dead. Okay, so I just want to make it clear that I wrote this uh, part of the script like over a year ago, and it is uh, it's aged really badly. Killing Floor actually outlived the queen. Long live Killing Floor, I guess. I should probably mention Killing Killing Floor can run on a fucking toaster, so you don't have to worry about PC specs or anything. You'll be able to have non-stop fun for hours with this game, on your dad's microwave. Just like with a lot of games though, Killing Floor wasn't always like it is today. In fact, it was almost a completely different game altogether. It started out as a mod for Unreal Tournament 2004. The basics were still similar, you know, you're still playing a first person shooter where you shoot zombie-like enemies, but in the original mod there weren't waves. Instead, it was a linear campaign and it was actually pretty scary. The general gameplay was still there, you know, you're still shooting fellas, but this time with finite resources and you're in this dark, dingy world completing objectives. It was basically just a survival horror game. I mean, check out the main menu. You could probably get tetanus just from looking at it. In the mod, you play as some random ass army dude who was a part of DRF, the Elite Disaster Response Force. You were sent to London to take care of some unknown outbreak with some mates but yeah, they weren't too lucky and you're one of the only survivors left. Since everything went completely wrong, your current objective is to reach any other survivors for a slight chance to escape with your life still intact. It's incredibly basic, but this was a 2004 mod. It works, I guess. The first thing you'll notice with this mod is how gross and grungy it looks. You look like you could catch a disease around every single corner, so it's accurate to the UK. Honestly, there are sections in the mod where it's downright unsettling at times. It oozes with a thick, ominous atmosphere. Even when enemies are attacking and there's heavy metal playing, it's still kinda creepy. I could go in depth about the mod, but it takes about 40 minutes to finish, and it's not really the main course of this video. It's the appetizer. Oh, oh look, <laughs> there's a second appetizer right next to it. This mod was later changed. Instead of it being a dark, spooky campaign going through the depths of London fighting for your life, it was a wave-based game where you hold out on different maps, fighting for your life again, but with friends. This idea stuck, and it was later more of find with a better UI, better gore, and even more weapons. And this version of the mod is probably the closest to the game we have today. Then the modders were approached by Tripwire Entertainment to help publish the game, give it a bit more refining here and there, which is when we got the Killing Floor we know today, which was released on Steam in 2009. So let's talk about Killing Floor, the best zombie game you've probably never heard of. Well, until now. The objective of the game is simple. You have to survive either four, seven, or ten waves with a boss at the end that you and your fellow friends have to kill. It sounds simple, but getting to that point is quite a challenge. Unless you play on the beginner difficulty, which is what I did as a kid because... I was a fucking pussy, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Each wave has you killing a certain amount of zombies. Well, they're called Zeds in this game, so I'm gonna refer to them as that from now on. I probably should have uh, specified that earlier. There are different variations of Zeds you have to kill, like an entire cast of them. Each one has completely different unique mechanics and personalities. I think they would be great in a sitcom together. <laughs> Wow. 
What do you think you're doing? <laughs> you're really starting to piss me off. Everywhere you look, everywhere. The early waves start simple. You gotta face off against stuff like clots, which are basic zombies. There's also gorefasts, which are faster clots with blades for arms, and occasionally you have to deal with an American. You get it? Because, because they're fat? Yeah, funny. High obesity rates. The later you get into the waves, the more shit the game throws at you, eventually leading up to the horrifying powerhouse versions of the Zeds. Like the Scrake, which is this large doctor looking guy with a chainsaw. Oh, and of course the iconic abomination known as Flesh Pounds. If you see one of these things, you do one of two things. Pelt it with every single round you have in your IC. Or, this is the smart option by the way, run the fuck away. I haven't even mentioned some of the other Zeds and the special abilities they have, but what I can say is each one is absolutely unique in both their abilities and visual design. Visual design especially, they are all intimidating as fuck and stand out from each other. I found them so intimidating that I actually refused to play the game by myself when I was younger. Call me a pussy all you want, but I was 10 at the time. I don't think I uh, should have been playing Killing Floor, I probably should have stuck to Little Big Planet, the best game ever made. Hell yeah! Then there's the boss, the Patriarch. This guy does not mess around. Sure he wears glasses like a specky four-eyed loser, but they just help him aim with his hit-scanning oh. minigun arm. This boss fight can make or break a match. He has so many tricks up his sleeve and you just don't see them coming half the time, which is strange because he always does the exact same thing when he spawns in on wave 10. He turns invisible at a random part of the map and instantly makes a beeline straight towards you. Thing is, you never know where he's gonna come from and the only time you'll know he's there there? Well, it's usually too late by that time. While fighting him, you should have some of the best weapons in the game. Like the absolute best firearms you can get from the trader with your hard-earned Great British Pounds. But even then, he can still absolutely demolish you and your teammates. All of this would be frustrating and horrible, having to restart entire matches working your way back up to the good weapons. But here's the thing, it isn't annoying. Because even the starting weapons pack a punch. Gunplay is always a very important part of first person shooters, and there's never an in between for how good it is in games. It's either flaccid and horrible, or literal gun porn. Thankfully, Killing Floor is definitely pornography in that department, especially the shotguns in the game always determine whether or not an FPS game is good just from the shotguns alone. The way Zeds react to the impact of the bullets is insanely satisfying too, especially headshots. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, there's this mechanic that randomly triggers called Zed Time that makes the game move in slow motion, and it always happens at the best times. It's just so cool, what can I say? Weapons are tied to different classes called perks, and you get incredible boosts if you're using the weapon specifically made for them. There are a total of seven in the game, and each one is completely unique. For starters, we got the Commando, which specializes in assault rifles. It feels like the most basic perk to choose, and honestly, it's my least favorite out of the seven, but it's still great despite this. You're also able to see invisible enemies, like the Stalkers, far more easily compared to everyone else. This also includes the Patriarch, so having a commando on your team during higher difficulties is pretty essential. Then we have the demolitions perk, which is probably the biggest damage dealer out of the seven. I mean, you already know why. The next perk on the list is the field medic, which is the support perk that I see absolutely nobody play. Cause let's be real, playing as a support is usually pretty boring. Support classes in games usually just have you focusing on healing your teammates rather than playing, you know, the actual game itself. But Killing Floor is a different story. The field medic focuses on SMGs. There's a cool gimmick though. They have little healing darts in them, so you're able to heal teammates while shooting into huge crowds of Zeds, keeping you in the gameplay while supporting teammates. It's just genius. They also have unique gas grenades that heal your team within a radius, while also damaging Zeds who stumble into the gas. It's just it's just good shit. You, if you play Field Medic, you're, you're amazing. Then we have the Firebug, which obviously specializes in fire weapons. It's kind of boring. I mean, you got the obvious stuff for this perk, like f flare revolvers. 
Oh wait, I forgot we're playing Killing Floor here. The Firebug is cool. It's very good for crowd control, encasing the field in scorching flames, which thankfully don't damage your teammates. Thanks, pal. You can also play as the Pyro from TF2 in this game, which gives Firebug a few extra points in the cool department. I don't think there's a single bad perk, and we still have three more to talk about. Like the Sharpshooter, easily the most enjoyable perk out of the bunch, as its main focus is popping Zed's heads, which will never not be satisfying, especially if it initiates Z time, allowing you to see all of the chunks fly everywhere in slow motion. Hi FBI agent watching this, I hope you're enjoying the video, make sure you like it, make sure you leave a like. I'm saving the best for last here, so the next perk I'm gonna talk about is the Berserker, which is the Caveman perk, where you focus on swinging your big weapon around. What, are you waiting for me to say something else? That, that's literally it, it's the melee perk. Last but not least, we have the best perk. And no, I'm not biased just because I play it the most out of all of them. It's the support specialist. The weapons you use with this perk are shotguns. And that's all the perks. Each and every one is useful in its own way. There aren't any duds in this list at all. There's a perfect amount of variety here. Now you may recall me mentioning weapons are related to these different classes. While yes, they are meant for the perks they're used for, you can still buy them with any perk, but you're always nowhere near as effective using them if your perk doesn't match the weapon. The fact you're able to do this is nice though, and hell, it could even give you a personal challenge if you're a sadist and want your guns to be shit. Despite all of this action and carnage though, the final version of Killing Floor still has the eerie atmosphere of the mod. Being alone on some of these maps is incredibly unsettling. You feel like you're being watched between waves. It, it's just really ominous. Killing Floor is a game that means a lot to me, and it's a game that stood the test of time. I can still hop onto a random ass server for a match and have an absolute blast playing it. I hope this video has made you interested in Killing Floor, especially if you've never heard of it before. If you're not into old games though, Killing Floor 3 is probably coming out at some point soon, so you can always just wait for that to release.